You know, the new Star Wars movie may take place a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but its special effects are straight out of the future. Rogue One fans have been dazzled by the big screen space battles and alien encounters, but perhaps most thrilling was the seamless resurrection of an actor who's been dead for more than 20 years. And, spoiler alert, the special effects Jedi Masters brought back someone else from the original film as well. Here's ABC's Clayton Zandel on how they did it. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, is currently blowing up the box office. And it's the groundbreaking visual effects that have everyone talking. This is the headquarters of Industrial Light and Magic. It's the special effects company that George Lucas founded back in 1975 to help him make the original Star Wars. Of course, they're doing some cutting edge work for Rogue One. We want to take you inside. Nightline was granted exclusive access inside ILM's San Francisco mothership. Accelerate to attack speed. To see how this sci-fi stronghold brought back, and this is a spoiler alert, two familiar faces from the past. I recognized your foul stench when I was brought on board. Charming to the last. Recreating a 19-year-old Carrie Fisher before she passed away last week, and Peter Cushing, who died in 1994. Prepare for the jump to hyperspace and inform Lord Vader. This monumental cinematic task fell to John Knoll and his team. Why was it so important to have Tarkin and Leia in Rogue One? Well, I think Tarkin, because he's central to the story of the Death Star, what it is, how it came to be, and Leia, because uh, we end up on Rogue One you know, minutes before the beginning of episode four. But in the world of visual effects, aliens and spaceships are relatively easy compared to creating believable humans. Well, we look at human faces all day, every day, so people are very attuned to you know, seeing anything that, that looks off. Oh, very good, everybody. Making digital humans is one of the hardest things you can do. And so we were very, very immediately excited and immediately terrified. The first step for ILM's artists was to binge watch every Tarkin scene over and over. We will then crush the rebellion with one swift stroke. Performances would be constantly referring back to these for how did he look, how did, his, how did he move, how did he smile. Underneath digital Tarkin is a real actor, Guy Henry, who carefully studied Cushing on the set. Lost in the attack. It's Henry's voice and performance that the ILM artist used as a guide. The original plans for the station are kept there, are they not? The process we would take to, to create a shot like this, the first thing we do is we shoot the live action plate photography. This is with Guy Henry um, as our performer on set, and he's dressed in full costume. Uh, he has what we call a head-mounted camera rig, which is designed uh, solely for capturing his facial performance. Charm to the last. This is, is the earliest that, test. As the first time we ever saw Guy's motion transferred onto Guy's model and then put onto Tarkin's uh, first like an early likeness. The problem is Cushing's performance and Henry's performance didn't always match. That required painstaking, sometimes frame by frame adjustments, constantly refining the most subtle details you can imagine, like lips. The original plans for this station are kept there, are they not? So if you look at the corner of his mouth, see how they kind of peel yes. apart? That stickiness is just a natural quality that lips have. And when they're not, when that's not present, they feel slightly um, artificial and um, uh, Muppet-like. ILM also caught a huge break when John Knoll tracked down an actual life cast of Peter Cushing's face made for the 1984 movie Top Secret. This was gold for us because it was um, uh, Peter Cushing as he appeared at a certain time in his life. All those pieces together give us the, uh, the power of illusion. Cool. He's there, sir. Finally, after nearly 18 months of work, the digital resurrection of Grand Moff Tarkin was complete. He's there, sir. On Scarif. The original plans for this station are kept there, are they not? My mom saw the movie. She didn't realize that this was a digital recreation. Uh, really? In fact, she commented that he looked amazingly well for someone of his age. The makers of Rogue One had the blessing of Cushing's estate, but the effect is, is drawing some criticism yeah. over the ethics of bringing the back well-known actors long after they're gone. This work was done with, uh, with great affection and care. You know, some of the objections I've, I've heard about, uh, about this is, uh, makes references to the uh, Fred Astaire with the Dirt Devil. Nothing escapes the power of a Dirt Devil. Um, or Audrey Hepburn selling chocolate. 
But that's not what we've done here. Uh, I'd like to think that the role that we gave Tarkin in this, this film is one that Peter Cushing would have been really very excited and happy to, to play. Eagle-eyed fans will also spot a few familiar rebel pilots from 1977 reappearing in this Rogue One space battle. This is Gold Leader standing by. This is Red Leader standing by. That was one of the really fun things about the film is that you start to sense that we're getting closer and closer to episode four and that you start to see those moments where, oh wait, I know that guy. Princess Leia's brief cameo was made possible by more digital doctoring using Norwegian actress Ingvild Dela. Fisher once joked to David Muir it was hard to watch herself in The Force Awakens. I got older and no one told me. And then they put me on a screen really, really big. And they put me in with high def. But before she died, Fisher gave Rogue One a thumbs up. Did Carrie Fisher see the final scene? It was also done with the permission of Carrie Fisher right. as well, that uh, she was involved in the process. And uh, you know, she saw the final result, and, and she loved it. Star Wars has always pushed the technological envelope uh, to some degree. You know, the first Star Wars film uh, represented a revolution in visual effects techniques. I think it's entirely appropriate that we be using the Star Wars films to move the bar. For Nightline, I'm Clayton Sandell in San Francisco. And Lucasfilm is, of course, owned by Disney, which is the parent company of ABC.